Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So I'm at a different location today. I wanted to get out of the house and I'm sitting outside of Starbucks here in sunny San Diego. So I just wanted a different look today. Um, for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women create the relationship that they want, need and desire. Today, we're gonna to talk about creating that relationship and the eight ways to get your man to put a ring on it. Let's talk about it. All right, ladies, the eight things that you need to do, to think about, to implement before your boo is gonna put a ring on it. The first thing that you need to understand, sisters, is your man's mindset. Where is his mind about marriage? What are his thoughts about marriage? How does he feel about marriage? Is he anti-marriage? Is he all in? Is he just like, uh, no? Is he like, you know what? I'm good just having a long-term relationship or I'm good with just having a girlfriend, but having the title, the certificate, the legality of your relationship, maybe he's just not into this. So you just have to know the mindset of the man that you're dealing with. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. If you're looking to be married for him to actually put a ring on it, you have to know his mindset about where where you want your relationship to go. Again, if your goal is marriage, then you need to know what his thoughts about marriage are. The second thing is that you have to realize what your standards are. You have to know what your standards are. You have to be able to implement your standards and let your let your guy know what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate. Now, I'm not saying go out there and be a major BITC, you finish the word. I'm not saying going out there and do that, but in order for you to be taken seriously, to be looked at as a person that is of marriage material. You have to have some standards and be willing to not go along with the flow because the ladies that go along with the flow usually never end up married. I have a, um, a co-worker where now, now he's an ex-co-worker. Him and I were really, really cool. And long story short, him and his girlfriend, have been together and have a young child the same amount of time that me and my now husband have. Yes, you heard right. Him and his girlfriend. He has not proposed to her. It doesn't matter the reasons why. He has shared some of them with me, but it doesn't matter why. The point is, she basically told him, as long as we're together, of course I want to get married, but as long as we're together, we're good for now. So I just blatantly asked him, did that put a fire under your butt to make you want to marry your girlfriend? He was like, no, exactly. She's a good girl. They have some issues, right? Like most of us do, things that they need to work on. But he has not made that commitment to say, I am staying. This is my forever date. And of course, she doesn't know that. So let me come back around here. Have some standards, ladies know what you need to say and do because if you're just going along with the flow you will be forever the girlfriend if you ever even get that title the, the couple that i'm talking about they live together they're building a life together but as boyfriend and girlfriend so ladies have some standards that's all i'm saying have some standards and implement those standards when it's needed the third thing ladies is to remain a mystery some of us come out here and we just want to tell and blab and throw up everything about ourselves everything about our past just everything we want to tell everything and you don't want to do that it's especially in the beginning you don't want to do that leave some something to the imagination make him think about what you're thinking about make him have to ask what you're thinking about if he asks you a question don't give 50 million details about it give one or two sentences maybe three sentences about it but let him ask for more information that way he doesn't really know what you're thinking again all of this is just in the beginning but still at some point here's the thing we women, we love to chat. Men know that we love to chat. Men also know that we usually divulge more information than they do. It's not necessarily a game, it's just it is what it is. But with that being said, 
do not treat your man do not treat your boo like one of your girlfriends what do i mean your girlfriends want all of the details we want it broken down we want to know okay so we, what time did he come was he late we want to know every single detail men don't give a damn about all that so do not treat your man like your girlfriend yes there are going to be things that you want to share with him that you probably shouldn't share with him and he's going to be willing to listen but do he really want to listen to no he doesn't so don't share everything like you would be don't don't share everything that you would share with your girlfriend with your man especially in the detail that's what i mean by that the details behind it your man don't want to hear all those details trust me he don't also goes hand in hand with remaining a mystery sis make him have to pull some information out of you that way you can see his level of interest in you the fourth thing to think about is to keep dating yes and i mean dating other people keep dating other people until you guys have that exclusive title meaning that you are deciding to date one another and one another only if he cannot date you and you only he's definitely not gonna be ready to marry you and you only he might marry you but he's gonna definitely cheat on you so you have to know where he is in the cycle in the process in the breakdown of um, him being able to be faithful. What are his thoughts on fidelity and even infidelity? What are his thoughts? Pick his brain. See what he's talking about. Some dating coaches and gurus would actually even tell you to keep dating other people until you guys are just about married. I do not believe in that because if you cannot be exclusive with me when we are just in the dating stages, i.e. now I am your girlfriend, but you, you damn sure not going to be able to be exclusive with me when we get in, engaged and especially when we move to the next stage of marriage. You're not going to be able to do it because you have to practice being the person that you're going to be when you're married before you get married. It doesn't naturally just fall into place once you get married. It doesn't work that way. The fifth thing to think about, sis, is don't make it too comfortable for old boy. Yes, I said it. Do not make it too comfortable for him. Do not be doing all of these wifely duties and chores as if you already have the title. Now, let me also say this. If you are cooking and he happens to be coming over, cool. But you're not cooking every single time. Now, also, let me back up and say it's not that you can never cook for old boy. What I am saying is that you don't want to make it comfortable enough for him to feel like that you are um, doing your duties and he doesn't have to give anything else. Because when you give too much, you think that that will push him in the in the way to say, you know what, I, I, need, I need to wife her up. But really, you don't. It actually makes him lazy. And you're giving too much. And again, that's part of the mystery gone. If he already sees that he can get everything from you in the dating stage or even without a title and, and he can get all of this stuff from, why would he marry you? That's just like you hear the statement, why would um, the man buy the cow if he can get the milk for free? That's a true statement. <laughs> he gonna get all of this free stuff from you with no real commitment to you. And then you thinking that he's gonna commit to you. Now, do circumstances work out like that? Yes, they do. But why even have to go through years and years and years and years of proving yourself, of proving that you are a wife? Why do that? Why do that to yourself? And then you're going to be the only one that's pissed off because he's good. He's getting it either way and he's getting it from you. So he's good. <laughs> he's good. What I am saying is don't make it too comfortable. Like I said, if you're cooking, then cook. If you happen to be washing clothes, he happened to be there, but you're not going over to his place and cleaning up his place. You're not going over there to do laundry. You're not doing none of that. No. Cause he don't get none of that right now when you make it too easy for him you are going to be the one that's pissed off so like my own relationship i talked about this before but basically i knew that my husband loves for me to cook for him and so yes i would cook for him you know when he was over or whatever i would cook for him but it wasn't um i would my point is i wouldn't do it all the time so i know that acts of service specifically cooking for him is a way to his heart but he didn't get that every time. Now that we're married, he gets deaf. Of course, he gets it now for sure. But when we were leading up to, he ain't, he ain't get that all the time. Mm -mm. I ain't making it too comfortable for you as your girlfriend. And even when we got engaged, I still didn't make it super comfortable for him. Right now, he got it comfortable. But before, no. No.
And even going back to the standards, he actually told me, of course, not when we were dating, but he told me once he had already proposed to me that that was one of the reasons why he did propose to me, because so many women do not have standards. And I did, and I stuck with them. And I basically was like, no, you can't do everything that you used to do with, you know, X, Y, and Z out there. You can't do that stuff with me. And as much as they men want to do their own thing, they really want structure. They really want a woman to put them in their place, per se, right? They, they really do. They're, ne they're never, ever, 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 ever going to come out of their mouth and say that, especially when you're doing it to them in that moment. But I already knew it to be true. And then my, my husband actually uh, confirmed it. He literally told me uh, maybe a month ago that that was one of the reasons that made him propose to me because I was just like, nope, nope. And that ain't happening. Nope. <laughs> now, I wasn't mean, being rude or mean or anything. I mean, it was just a fact. And I stuck to that. The sixth thing to think about is to make him dependent on your words of wisdom. Have you guys reached a status where he is calling you all the time or texting you all the time and asking for your opinion, whether it's um, on a position that he should take or, you know, what should, he, what should he say in this particular position? Does it sound right when he says this? Is he calling you for your words of wisdom, for your advice? Is he, before he moves forward in a purchase or whatever it is, is he becoming more dependent on you? And meaning that your words, your advice is special to him and it means a lot to him, which is why he's seeking you out before he goes along and makes said purchase or makes said decision. He's doing it on purpose. So you are becoming an integral part of his life and he needs your words of wisdom. And especially if you are... Um, uh, um, giving him all of these words of encouragement and letting him know that he got this and you know baby you should do maybe you should do or just try this out you're not being demanding or you know that he can't do it you're just helping him reach his potential you're helping him reach his potential so you're a part of his game plan and it doesn't start off that way, especially in his mind, right? It doesn't necessarily start off that way, but eventually the more dependent on your words of wisdom that he becomes, the more he's going to seek you out, the more he's going to want you to stay in his life long term. Number seven is to pull back more often than you naturally do it's not going to be a natural thing for you to pull back when he calls you you're going to want to answer when he texts you you're going to want to answer and i'm not saying never answer however if you are in the middle of doing something and he happens to call he happens to text let him wait he don't have to know that he's waiting just finish up what you're doing and but you know that you're making him wait if he's texting you text him back in 15 minutes like start off small, but you need to pull back a little bit. I'm, again, I'm not saying super play games or anything, but if you are in the middle of a task, keep your task the priority and then get back to him as soon as you can. Because maybe you actually are in a business meeting. And if he's in a business meeting, he's not going to be able to get to you right away. So you're in a business meeting, you're doing something that is a priority. Now, unless you guys, now, unless you guys are supposed to be meeting out at that very moment, then that's something different, obviously. But if you happen to, if you happen to be at your spot, he happens to be at his spot or work and y'all both at y'all prospective workplaces, finish doing what you're doing and then get back to him. Pull back just a little bit, sis. It's going to be unnatural. It's going to be uncomfortable because you want to hear from me. What did he say? Oh my God. Pull back a little bit. Make him wonder. Don't let him see how available you are because once you are too available, he loses interest anyway. So keep that part in mind. Pull back. Yes, you're going to say, oh, this is hard. But just remember, the more, 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 more you are available, the more, 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 more he's going to eventually pull away. And speaking of pulling away, this is point number eight, which is when you are not getting what you want, be ready to walk away because you know your worth. Yes. If, if something is not adding up for you, you got that gut feeling, that intuition, follow that gut feeling, follow that intuition. Do what you need to do, sis. Do what you need to do for sure. Because as soon as you go against your um, gut, as soon as you go against everything that you know that you should be doing, you are going to be the one who is going to regret it. You're going to be saying that shoulda, woulda, coulda. I shoulda, woulda, coulda. 
when all you got to do is follow your gut and you know when you are being taken advantage of yes it sucks but in the long run you are going to be feeling like i'm glad i did that because that would have been a world of trouble all right sis let me know how you're feeling leave a comment down in the comment section below do any of these things make sense to you are you now a married person or someone that is engaged that has uh did or implemented any of these things how is it working out for you i definitely want to know leave some comments down in the comment section below i will talk to you guys very very soon deuces